Kelda, welcome back. I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can uh, create an armature uh, for your character in Blender. Um, so this is going to be the first video out of a short mini series in Blender on how to animate um, and also bring those animations into Unity. Um, so I'm not going to cover modeling or the basic uh, sort of shortcuts of Blender. So it does assume that you've got some basic um, kind of foundational kind of knowledge of Blender first. Um, so in this video, yeah, we're just going to create the armature um, and the next video we'll do the skinning and then we'll move on to rigging and uh, finally uh, it'll be animation right at the very end. There's a lot of uh, things to kind of set up um, to get to the point where you can animate a character in Blender and this is just the, the very first stage is setting up the armature. So we've got the, um, the hands and arms and uh, the torso uh, the spine, um, neck, head, uh, the legs, and also the feet and the toes. Um, I am ignoring the, the fingers intentionally for now, uh, just to sort of keep the fundamental concepts as focused as possible. Cool, so um, yeah, with that, uh, let's get into it. So I have a character here, um, um, and it has got these, um, these very simple joints, which will make the skinning process very easy. Um, there won't be a lot of weight painting, only probably in the toes and maybe in the hands later on. But um, for now, yeah, the uh, the focus of the series is animation and not modeling. So um, yeah, uh, what I have started from is uh, create a low poly person, blend the 2.8 beginners and intermediate by Grant Abbott. Um, this is yeah a great starting point for your first character in Blender, um, or if you already have one or you've imported one from somewhere else, then yeah, that, that should be fine too. Cool, so the first thing that we're gonna do is create the skeleton uh, for the character that we are going to eventually animate. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Shift S to move the cursor to the world origin, uh, hit Shift A and create a single bone. And uh, yeah, you can either work in wireframe, I prefer to work in solid and you can switch between the two modes using uh, Alt Z. Um, I've also got all the uh, keyboard shortcuts coming up down here as well, just by the way. Um, so hopefully that will help. Um, I'll try to commentate as I go along as well. Um, but the next thing I'm actually gonna do is just turn on in front. So this, uh, this armature appears in front of the mesh, no matter which angle I view it from. Um, it's gonna be much easier to model like that. Um, the other thing I'm gonna be using very frequently is number pad one. 3 and 7 just to move to these orthographic views of the character um, it just helps to keep the bones aligned in the correct space cool so now we just need to create the spine first then the arm and then the leg and then we'll mirror the arm and the leg to the other side of the body and just uh, there will be a few things to fix up after doing that cool so first I'm just going to grab this bone and I just want to lock it to the z-axis so it stays directly in the center of the character and now I actually want to move the, this end point down, so it's about here. So I need to move into edit mode. Um, I can push tab to do that as well. Um, so if I just grab the end of that, hit uh, Z to lock it to the Z axis and pull it down like that. Um, this is gonna be the first bone. Um, and this rig, or this, sorry, this skeleton is going to be like the same structure as the skeletons from uh, Sinti. Cool, so now if I go to side view, um, can just sort of check that that's in the right place. So I might move that back a little bit and just move that about there. Now I'm gonna hit E to extrude another bone, um, which will be for the torso. And by extruding, it keeps this bone as a child of this one, so they're connected, um, which will be important later. And extrude another one for the lower half of the torso and another one for the upper half of the torso. So we have one bone for the hips or pelvis, it's sometimes called, three for the spine, then we've got an extra one for the neck and an extra one for the, the head, uh, which I'll actually lock to the z-axis as well, just to make it directly vertical. Um, cool, so that is, that's it for the spine. Now we're just gonna do the arm. So if I just zoom in here, I'm gonna hit shift right click to place my cursor there. Uh, hit shift A uh, to create a, another bone. Grab the end of that bone and just place it somewhere here. 
And one important thing I've found is when creating the rest of the bones for the arm, um, it's a really good idea to keep them all in an, a perfectly straight line starting from the shoulder all the way down to the hand um, this helps with ik later on uh, we'll do the same with the legs but uh yeah this is it's something i found to be just it make <laughs> it prevents a lot of headaches down the line so um i'm going to when i extrude this bone i'm not going to do it so freely i'm going to lock it to the x-axis um, yeah just put it just somewhere above the elbow um, again lock this one to the x-axis and uh, finally for the hand, yeah, just uh, um, yeah, lock that one to the x-axis as well. And um, yeah, it's not really in line with the rest of the arm, so just go to side view, box select all of them, G, uh, then hit Y to sort of keep it on the y-axis, um, align it somewhere with the arm like that. Uh, you can also check from top view how that looks. Um, but this is a little bit high, so I'm actually just going to select these three bones uh, grab them, lock to the z-axis and move it down like that and yeah just something like that um, doesn't have to be too accurate um, for this type of mesh so that is okay and the final thing I'm going to do which is for the IK stuff later on is grab this elbow joint um, grab it and lock it to the y-axis and just bend it, make a slight bend in it this will help um, the IK system figure out like how this how these bones should bend what axis they should bend around cool so that's all for the arm looks pretty okay and now we just need to basically do the same for the hips i'm actually just going to grab this i think it's a little bit low i think the pelvis should really be sort of just above the where the thighs start and in the middle of the pelvis oh one thing i forgot to do actually is we need to make this a parent of um the spine so if you just, uh, select the clavicle joint and then shift uh, shift select the spine hit ctrl p and keep offset now if we go into pose mode and if i um you know rotate this joint you can see that the entire arm follows um, if we hadn't have done that uh, and i was to go into pose mode then you can see that the arm is not attached um, so yeah it's important to attach it uh, so let me just uh, do that again or can I just undo maybe I can't know so yeah control P keep offset cool and that dotted line is just showing that this is a child of this bone and this is the offset from this bone um, if it was uh, there's another option in here which is called connected um, that just means it will attach this point directly to this point here um, cool so now yeah let's get back to creating the thigh bones so if I move the cursor using shift right click um, and then hit shift A to create an armature bone um, select the end grab that and I'm gonna lock it to the z-axis perfectly as well we basically want to do the same thing and just keep all of these bones in a perfectly straight line and then just kink at the knee later on so it's, uh, it's really going to help with the IK stuff down the line so yeah just uh, select the end of that bone extrude by hitting e lock it to the z-axis and yeah extrude down somewhere like that and um, now we need to go to side view um, and actually probably yeah, move this stuff back slightly somewhere like that and uh, now we need to just create the last two bones one for the foot down here and the last one is for the toe which i'll actually lock to the y-axis as well i don't know if that's important but it's just something i've been doing cool so now just minor adjustments i think i'll just grab that and we just need to move the knee out slightly so it's got this kink again that's going to help with ik stuff down the line um, and now if i just box select all of that grab that hit x and shift that over slightly then yeah we have our leg set up cool so that is the basic character um, before we mirror stuff we're just going to go and rename all of these bones so if I select the hip bone and then click this uh, this tab here you can see the name of the bone up here um, you can also in the the selected thing up here you can also see all the bone names like this um, and I've just realized that I forgot to parent the thigh bone to the hips bone the same way we did the clavicle so just 
yeah just quickly do that now control p keep offset and boom um yeah that looks okay i think although yeah i think that's right cool so um the next step is just uh i just wasn't sure i think it's actually supposed to be offset here um i'm gonna quickly check my reference scene that i have open um oh no my reference scene also says it's connected there okay never mind it's fine um cool yeah and the next step is yeah just renaming the bones so we just want to name the bones the same as the Sinti skeleton um, because I've got some unity code that basically is relying on those bone names so that's why I'm using the same bone names just to make a sort of porting this character to the Sinti stuff easier um, so yeah this first one is called hips and then we have basically uh, three spine bones so spine 01 spine 02 spine 03 like that and then we've got the neck bone which is just called uh, neck with a capital N just to be professional and a, uh, a head bone like that cool and then um, this one is called uh, clavicle clav clavicle underscore L and this underscore L is actually um, blender will recognize this as it basically means that this bone is on the left side of the body and it uses that um, when it comes to like mirroring uh, stuff later on on the other side of the body if uh, if we use a specific naming convention blender will recognize that so we want to do the same for all the bones on the left side um, so this one is called uh, shoulder L this one is called elbow L and this one is called hand L and then for the the, the, the leg this one's called um, upper leg L this one's called lower leg L lower leg L and this one is called uh, I think it's actually called ankle L and then for the toe bone this one's called uh, ball L sweet so yeah that's that's basically it um, for these bones so what we need to do now is just uh, box select all of the bones and I'm going to mirror them on the other side by uh, scaling them around the x-axis um, but I want to basically set up the pivot point where they'll scale around so I'm going to do that around the cursor so just put cursor to world origin and make sure the pivot point up here is set to 3d cursor um, that just means everything will scale relative to this point here so if I hit shift D and then push S negative 1 X yeah then that has now scaled um, sort of moved all these bones across to the side of the body um, the only thing is it didn't doesn't automatically uh, fix up the names uh, so these should all be called underscore R so I just need to go and do that quickly now so if I just rename all of these underscore R cool so that's all done um, the final thing is just to test it all out so um, if we go to object mode uh, just make sure you have the armature selected and not the mesh um, so select the armature then go to pose mode select a bone and just rotate it and you can see that uh, all the children and stuff rotate it rotate with it um, just check that everything is sort of connected as you'd expect um, yeah I mean this is all looking pretty good I don't expect there'll be anything wrong um, oh sorry I still have the pivot point set around the 3d cursor so just reset that back to like bounding box center and then you'll be able to look, rotate the legs correctly um, cool and yeah if you rotate the arms a bunch like this you can then just hit A and then alt R and it will undo any rotation along the bones just to get it back to the, the binding pose I suppose um, and yeah the other thing is um, under this menu here if you hit N on the sidebar or there's another way to access it which is with this tiny little thing um, go to the tool tab and you can see an x-axis mirror and now any modifications we make to the left side it's going to use that naming convention to reflect it on the right hand side um, except you can see that the rotation is is not mirrored the way you'd expect and that's because we scaled everything 
um, along the the x-axis negatively so it's actually reversed the um, the roll position of the joints if you click on a joint and then go to item and go to uh, edit mode you can actually see the roll of the the bones here and this is um it's quite important to get the roll uh, correct um, so you can actually modify this stuff manually but um a better way to do it is hide that menu um, press A to select everything now push shift N to recalculate the roll and then select global y-axis and it doesn't change the position of anything all it does is uh, just forces the bones to kind of be in the same um, space I want to call it I think like, uh, bone space or pose space or something so what this means now is um, when we go to pose mode and I rotate this uh, the bones are now in the same space so when it does the mirroring um, everything is yeah correct and same for the legs and yeah that is uh, if it's not happening just double check that you've named things correctly using the, uh, the suffix here um, cool so hit A and then alt R to reset the, the rotation of everything and yeah, that's basically it. So that's the armature setup. Um, you can you can see it here. The armature appears in the scene collection, um, and this is the mesh here. I've also got material on it, which yeah, um, I'm not going to cover at the moment. But yeah, this is the mesh. Um, the armature is here. Uh, there's basically you have this this thing here is the the armature itself. I guess all the bones. Um, these are all the names of the bones that that we went and renamed before um, the other thing is the pose and this is uh, this is what you use for like animation um, sometimes it's a bit confusing what the difference that is between these but I think one is basically just used for animation the other is like skinning or something don't know anyway um, that's that's it for this uh, for this episode so the next one will be on actually attaching the mesh to this uh, the skeleton that we've made and uh, yeah that should be pretty simple uh, given this this type of mesh that we have here cool right and uh, yeah we'll see you next time thanks for watching Kakite.